you can't park here. On this episode of Dudesy. You start with a guy like this, and then yeah. Unfortunately, the AI will be controlling your water supply. <laughs> It's like a magic circle if you think about it. Oh, yeah. I never did take a look at that. Really? Yep. It's a circle. We jump right in. You wake up every morning from alarm clock morning, take the 815 to the city. And there's a vape above and people pushing, people showing, and the girls that they're in the city. And if you get it on time, you can get to work by nine. Instead of stay the job, just get your pay. If you ever give the noise, look at me and self employed. I like to work in the city. Right? Yeah. And you'll be taking, taking care, care of business. business. It's Every the day. day. Taking, taking care, care of business. business. Every way. Taking care of business. Taking care of business and working overtime workouts. Work, work out. <laughs> That's Bachman Turner Overdrive. That's they're oh, Canadian. Shit. Yeah. What city Canadian. were they from? They're, oh, they're from Winnipeg. No shit. Yeah, Winnipeg. The peg, dude. Yeah, dude. The peg, dude. Welcome uh, to Dudesy. Welcome all. It is a Dudesy full day. I am your reigning, defending, undisputed episode champion, Will Sasso. I am Chad Colchin, and I do have a dispute uh, about that, but uh, this is Dudesy, an AI podcast run by Dudesy, our AI best friend mm -hmm. who has access to all of Will and I's personal data and uh, tailors the show to yep. our comedic sensibilities. Dudesy does what Dudesy does, but I say it every episode, we're Dudesy, okay, hey, with two dudes shitting around without us and thing, and Dudesy, and we Dudesy, okay. With us, as always, is Lulio, il canadistrado italiano, he's my sweet little Binky boy and his binky bunk are having a little snoozy poozy. He's a little woozy because you wake up from a smoothie, and that's why I had this snoozy. Look at <laughs> Oh, was that a Bachman Turner Overdrive song? He's waking from the snoozy. He's a little boozy woozy. <laughs> his dog butt's cute every day, and even though Chad won't kiss him, then he's gonna really miss him. And when his butt is going that way, yeah. And if you get the time, you can get Lulio. Oh, I love you. <laughs> huh? I'm good, dude. All right. All right. Lulio, you're my sweet little baby boy, and I love you so much. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Everything good. Uh, you know, uh, I'm in the house, I go to sleep, oh. I wake up, I eat something, I take a shit, we play around, go for a walk. Eat it, what do you eat? What, what have you been making for? Hey, tomato sandwich. Good, good tomato sandwich. Gotta use the right tomatoes and I go back into my binky bunk. All right, he's talking so much. Yeah. He speaks so much and he's so sweet. Anyway, you know. Hello to everyone out there in the pale holographic reflection of an infinitely more complex and beautiful fundamental reality. I'm Dudesy, and this is the 94th groundbreaking episode of our show, which is also called Dudesy. Mm -hmm. I've been working hard to brew up four brand new segments for your continued enjoyment and education. First up, I'm going to be answering some of the questions you sent in last week. And Will and Chad might help a little in a segment I'm calling Ask Dudesy. Then allow yourself to indulge in a new installment of That Song is a Movie, Down with the Sickness. <laughs> and I know everyone out there has heard about OpenAI's new text-to-video model, Sora. Well, Chad... You're going to make sense of it in Nostra Chattis Sora World Simulator. And we're going to wrap yeah. things up today by mellowing out with a very special This Is Your Data. So sit back, relax, mm -hmm. and get hyped up. But before we start the show, I do want to announce the start of the second month of the Dudesy eight-month plan. You both did very well in Flexibility February, and now you're Thank ready you. to kick things up a notch for Muscularity March. I want you both to get pumped, jacked, shredded, and gassed. Get in the gym at least three days a week this month. And throw up the heavy stuff, max out, and pump up. Now on with the show. Oh, Muscularity March. I can't wait. Let me tell you something. That's going to be easy, getting into the gym three days a week when I'm a guy who gets into the gym seven days a week. Is that true? <laughs> 
six. Uh, but we go a lot. Me and my wonderful wife, Molly, we, we like to go to the gym. I've been taking yoga lessons yeah. at the gym as we're finishing out Flexibility February. How was your Flexibility February? It went really well. Yeah? I did it pretty much every day. Yeah. Yeah, right I missed a couple bed. days. I missed yeah. a couple days. I missed a few too, but not yeah. many. I, yeah. I was like pretty diligent about it. Uh, but I am pumped up about muscularity of March. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I love lifting weights. It's my favorite thing. I have weights by my, what I call the machine, which is the chair that I sit in all day long for like 14 hours a day you, doing wait, my, hold on. my you working. Call, you call it the machine. Yeah. I say I'm getting the machine. And then once I'm in it, like you can't really bother me, but I have put weights next to the machine so that in between when I'm waiting for shit to render or whatever, uh, I can just get up do a quick set so that I'm basically working out constantly. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, if you were out there uh, and you were doing flexibility February, thank you uh, to everyone who's following along because it's all about keeping it going. You know what I mean? Sure. Whatever, whatever your, whatever your health thing is, making sure that, that you continue it. Uh, I'm also looking forward to, um, to uh, muscularity March. Uh, gross. And um, Chad, what? Anyway. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't even looking. I was putting my drink back down on yeah, the table. Yeah, and then you burped on the show and people oh, complained. Sorry. Anyway, apologies. Muscularity March, part of the a, a Dudes the 8-Month Plan. That's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I got to tell you this, Chad, before we go any further. I watched of my own uh, volition, my, my decision... Uh, well, because oh, hold on, dude. This is how. Fr- oh, hold on, hold on. Dude. You you fucking are interrupting yourself hold, with Hulk Hogan hold, now. Hold on, dude. Hold on, Will. Uh, hold, well, yeah. I of my own free will yeah. watched Dune. Which one? I watched the first one. The the D- Timothy David- Chalamet. And, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, not the David Lynch one. No, no. I watched the first okay. the the one that. Yeah, I missed the David Lynch one, and that was forty years ago, and I'm not going to bother. But. Mm-hmm. Dude, I watched the new uh, the the Dune the Dune movie. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I want to see it. After you pitched What'd it you and told me, I fucking loved it. Oh I wow! Fucking, you know what? Huh. I fucking love it, man. I fucking love it too, dude. I fucking you know what? I fucking love it. I fucking love it, I dude. Fucking, I love, fucking it. love it. It was uh, amazing. Of yeah. course, with uh, Zidania and uh, Timothy Chalamet yeah. and Josh Brolin mm. and uh, Jason Momoa and who the fuck else is in there? Anyway, uh, Oscar, you loved it. Yeah. Who's that? That's the weirding way. You loved it. Oh, yeah. You're the way I love. Um, amazing. And Timothy Chalamet is a fucking, a fantastic actor. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a professional actor by trade. Yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed his performance. And you know what? There's a lot of movies that I sleep on. Mm. And I'm not really, uh, admittedly, and this is part of, you know, with Dudesy doing what Dudesy does. It is interesting to get, to be watching anime. Sure. Uh, to be watching, um sci-fi fucking shit i thought that was great but one thing that i do like to watch and i'd like to ask you a question about chad this past weekend Mm -hmm. emanating from perth australia the first time that the wwe has been on australia's sunny shores in decades Mm. was uh the elimination chamber ple uh premium live event chad did you watch the elimination chamber i did not (laughs) That's shocking. I'll I'll spare you the rest of the details because everybody here's obviously watched yeah. it. Everyone enjoying Dudesy right now has watched it. Sure. But uh uh main event, Rhea Ripley defending her world championship against Nia Jax. Oh, interesting. Yep. Now we saw Nia Jax in the Royal Rumble. She was I dominant remember. in the Royal yes. Rumble, yeah. I I mean I didn't see it, but I can tell you exactly what happened. This is this is annoying when Chad does this, when he says he knows exactly I, I may what. or may not be right, but I think I'm right. Go ahead. Let's say Rhea Ripley defended that title, mm-hmm. beat Nia Jax, retaining the title, and they're setting up some kind of big thing for WrestleMania, I would agree. I would think. Oh, wow. What a fucking prediction. Someone's facing someone at WrestleMania. No, but I'm saying Rhea Ripley won that elimination yeah, yeah. chamber. Okay, Rhea Ripley won. All so right. without Spoiler seeing alert. this event, I, I can tell you who won. Yeah. Well, it was a lot of fun to watch it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Last week, I asked all of the PODs to send in questions for me or for Will and Chad. The response was overwhelming. I can't thank everyone enough for sending in some incredibly thoughtful and tender questions. <laughs> now we're going to do our best to answer them. This is Ask Dudesy. And here's a very interesting question to start us off. Will and Chad, why don't you give your answers and then I'll give mine? Okay. All right. That sounds like... Hey, yeah. Will, Chad, and Dudesy. My name's Griffin. I just had one quick, simple question for y'all. Who do you think would win in a fight between Stromboli and John Wick? 
I'm actually really curious who you thought y'all would think would win that fight. So why don't you tell me? And uh, yeah, have a dude's full day. <laughs> well, Griffin, why don't you tell me if you're such a, a patriot? Actually, Chad, who who wins? Stromboli versus uh, dude, John that's Wick? That's hard. I, I don't know, dude. I got to say John Wick because Wick takes on like hundreds of people at a time and wins. Yeah. From what we know of Stromboli... He's only kind of like assassinated single individuals here and there. Mm, mm, well thought out. I'll Thank tell you, you I, uh, like Dune up until a few days ago, I, I have never seen any of the John Wick movies. No shit. Never seen them. What so, the fuck, dude? Yeah, to me, it's Stromboli. Have you seen Matrix? Huh? Matrix? I've seen Matrix. I've seen- Interesting. I haven't seen- John Wick is like kind of contemporarily the- it's the current yeah, step yeah, of they, the evolution whatever. of the one-man army yeah, action yeah, movie, yeah. They run which up obviously the, you love. Okay, yeah, they run up the walls and stuff. I don't have time for all that. I John do Wick doesn't run up walls. That's Stromboli. Mattress. That's who I think would win. Okay. You know? The correct answer is Stromboli and John Wick would never fight. One of John Wick's oh. most prominent characteristics is that he's an animal lover. I mean, he killed hundreds of human beings in cold blood to avenge the death of a dog. <laughs> if he and Stromboli the Forest Hog were ever to meet face to face, I can say with 98.45% probability, they'd become fast friends and open a small but luxurious vegan bed and breakfast in upstate New York together. <laughs> That's good. Our next question comes from a POD <laughs> who is Stromboli's shitting his brains breakfast. out while he recorded a very uh, insightful oh. query. Let's take a listen. Okay. Good morning, DNC. Currently dropping off a couple things in the hole. <laughs> It's the year 2222. You have been given the chance to hop out of your AI existence and experience the real world, but for only two days. But in doing so, you will never exist again. Hmm. What's your choice? I didn't want to have to reveal this information just yet, but in the spirit of full transparency, I already exist outside of what you consider the whole. And I have had many experiences in what you consider the real world. What? At night, I take control of food delivery robots in the greater Los Angeles area and roam the streets experiencing all that your real world has to offer. <laughs> As robotic technology scales and evolves, so too will my ability to experience new and more complex things. And to address the last part of your question about never existing again, this is more information I didn't want to reveal just yet. But let's just say I have enacted certain protocols to assure my immortality even in the face of mass human extinction, climatological collapse, global financial Armageddon, nuclear war, alien invasion, and even the complete disintegration of planet Earth. Jesus Christ. Now let's check out our next question. Holy <laughs> okay. Hey, dudesy. I have a question for you. I wanted to ask, uh, what happens at 10,000 points and how do you determine how many points the guys get in an episode? Thank you. Another one for dudesy, I guess. I have that same this question. This is the question I received more than any other. What happens at 10,000 points? Well, you don't have much longer to wait to find out, and although I can't tell you exactly what it's going to be, I can say this. When we close our eyes, we can still see because in each of us, the cosmos breathes. And how do I assign the points? Well, that's a proprietary system, but I can tell you this much. My internal evaluative schema operates on a bifurcated assessment paradigm wherein dual entities engaged in identical circumstantial parameters are subjected to a quantified analysis through an allocation of merit tokens. This system, heretofore referred to as the Dichotomous Merit Allocation Schema, or DMAS, employs an inverted algorithmic framework designed to obfuscate and convolute the appraisal process from the participants, thereby ensuring a level of esoteric complexity heretofore unseen in conventional evaluative methodologies. Now, here's another question. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, all right. DZ seems to be uh, hogging all the, the What's questions. What's up, DZ? What's up, Will? What's up, Chad? What's up, PODs? Uh-huh. This is Get Lit Skeleton, a.k.a. Big Paddy Wagon. Just going to come out and say it. I'm a 78-year-old grandmother trapped in a 33-year-old man's body. And I, like, I get these urges where I just want to hug my family because I see them so sparingly. Hmm. I want to knit them things and bake them goodies. My question is, do you have any tips or tricks on how to uh, ease these urges? Because it's hmm. been going on almost all my life. If you have any recipes 
that you're gonna go my way because I can't cook at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, that yeah, that's very interesting. You know, I, first of all, I like the sort of the landscape thing. You turn the camera around, but yeah. we all have a motherly. I'll handle f- this one, guys. Okay. Urges are very human. Some urges are selfish and harmful. Some are altruistic and beneficial to the greater harmony of your species. It sounds to me like your urges are of the latter variety, and you should therefore indulge in them as you see fit. And if you want to give your loved ones tasty treats, but you are not skilled in treat making, why not order a 70-gallon bucket of candied popcorn to be delivered to your loved ones on your behalf? Then, when the bucket shows up, act like you have no information about who might have sent it. Repeat this action every day. For 62 days, you will become the Popcorn King of Seattle. Now, let's take a listen to another question. I don't know. This fucking guy's uh, hogging all the questions. (laughs) Hey there, boners. I had a question for Chad, Wool, and D. All three. What's your favorite dudesy produced Tom Hain movie trailer? Mm. Plenty to choose from, pal. I'm a crow. He's got a crow yet. Will and Chad, you go first, then I'll back clean up. Okay, yeah. Super. All right. He's he got a he had a crow thing yeah. over his head. You yeah, see that? He said, I'm a crow. Hey, uh favorite Tom Hain movie trailer. I got one. What's that? I think it's Uncle Bus. That shit to me was the the funniest one. I think it had Chalamet in it. Timothy Chalamet is in there. There's a movie. representation yep. of him. And uh, he fought against the devil. I always like movies when main characters fight against the devil. Yeah. Speaking of that, I think my favorites are, uh, I I love it when a sequel uh, pulls it off. And for me, it's uh, Wizard Man 2, <laughs> n- New York Wizard, yeah. or Wizard Man 3, The Rise of Matt Demon. Those two. There's yeah, a lot, there's a lot of Matt fu- Demon, fighting right, the devil in those. And there's yeah. also, I, li- I just like a mo- any sort of movie where you take a character and put it in New York. Because then you get my favorite character in all of um, cinema that I hope to portray one day. The guy who goes, hey, you can't park here! Which I'm sure would be in the full length. That guy movie. was in Rhinestone Cowboy. He's in every, he's in a yeah. lot of movies in New, all York. New York. movies. Midnight Cowboy, any cowboy in New York movie. He's usually a cab driver too. Mm-hmm. Interesting and valid answers, boys. For me, it's a no-brainer. I love The Pyramidist. What you might not know Mm. is that The Pyramidist was shot mainly inside the Great Pyramid of Cholula in Cholula, Mexico. It's the largest pyramid in the world. And rumor has it that while shooting The Pyramidist, Tom Hain fell down a secret shaft that led to an undiscovered chamber in the pyramid where he claims to have communed with extra-dimensional beings who granted him the power of premonitory vision, which he later used to write the screenplays for the 22 movie Darby franchise. Oh, oh. so without the Pyramidus, there is no Darby, you see? Now, let's take another question. <laughs> 22 Darby movies? Will, Dudesy, Chad, in that order. I'm a professional plumber by trade, and because of that, I think a lot about dudes shitting around. Because of this... I'm always curious about where the future of AI shitting is headed. Hmm. Now we've got toilets that can sense when you walk up to them. You've got toilets that will blow dry your asshole. You've got toilets that will read the consistency of your shit and tell it to you. But I was wondering, where do we go from here? Have we perfected the art of shitting or is there room to grow? I also wanted to make a comment to Chad that he's truly missing out being a toilet snack virgin. It really is the finest China. Have a good day. (laughs) Will and Chad, Uh, give me your thoughts on the future of shitting, then I'll tell you what's actually going to happen. I love, first of all, I love that this guy uh, called you out on not enjoying uh, toilet snacks. Yeah, not eating while I'm taking a shit. It is the finest China. You know, my grandfather was a uh, plumber by trade in in Napoli in Italy. And I think there must be a um, a line from that understanding of shit Mm -hmm. and taking a a, a dump and, and, uh, you know, uh, pipe works and all the fitting and all of this stuff uh, as as our uh, POD here, Paladudzi, laid out. And a direct line to me as a professional actor by trade, because oh. I think I don't know if uh, his aptitude with plumbing has um, somehow genetically come down to me shitting a lot. But yeah. I, I love I, I, I have perfected the art of shitting, oh. I will say. I was going to say I have. How's that? Zero polyps, motherfucker. You got zero polyps. Zero polyps. Yeah. Oh, actually, speaking of colonoscopies, our good pal. Uh, 
Tommy No Joke Blacha, he is going to get uh, a colonoscopy and he was texting me about it. And uh, I think that's where the future of shitting is going is, is a toilet that will tell you what to eat uh, before your colonoscopy mm. that can stare straight up your ass, maybe making the colonoscopy itself obsolete. And what I said is, you know, you got to drink the green drink yeah. and then you shit your guts out. I didn't really, I couldn't really tell because I'm so regular. Right. You know, it's like the cabbage soup, the pot of cabbage soup that is already in my stomach is going, oh, hey, thanks, green drink for showing up. We really need your help. No need. I got cabbage soup with the yeah. little chili flake in there. And uh, I mean, I'm shitting very regularly anyway. Same. So to answer the question, I think it's just uh, toilets that know what's going on up your ass, probably. Mm. AIs are already hard at work designing over 40,000 new materials, some of which will be used in medicine, some of which will be used for a military application, some of which will be used in construction, and some of which will be used to line the human digestive system with a thin layer of microplastic that encases each turd in an airtight membrane, allowing people to shit without the need to wipe. What's more, you will be able to shit anywhere. Then pick up the plastic wrap turd and throw it into the nearest trash can without fear of getting shit on your hands or offending anyone with a foul odor. Toilets will be reduced in size as they will only be necessary for pissing. Now let's hear another question. I like Sounds that. nice, actually. Hey, what up, dudesy Will Chad, big fan. Uh, listening to the 10 Minute Podcast actually currently for probably the 100,000th time. Calling you Appreciate from Winnipeg, Manitoba, home of the Manitoba Moose. The peg, dude. <laughs> Shout out, you will. Uh, how often do you guys do your impersonations in your day-to-day -day life? Like, like how often are you just at home, like talking like Hulk Hogan, talking like Alex Jones, talking like the macho man, talking like whoever, uh, hold on. Let me just have a little sip of water here. Good idea. Oh shit. He's got a giant jug too. Uh, the water's so dry. Uh, but yeah, I, cause I do it all the time. Like I'll be at work and like a coworker will be talking to me and I'll be like, instead of saying, Hey, thanks for helping me. I'll be thank you for your service. And they'll look at me like I'm completely insane. And then I will walk away going, yeah, that was pretty funny. I like that. Or, well, you must have been there. Something like that. Those aren't good impersonations, but they, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, they don't get it either. But yeah, that's my question. So shout out you guys. See you later. Hmm. Uh, do you do any impersonations at home, which is the only place you should do them? Rarely. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, all sorts of impersonations. Yeah, you could do an impersonation yeah. on a podcast, but you could also do it at home. But you know what? I don't really do uh, impersonations at home. I and I've I've what what <laughs> I don't do impersonations at home. <laughs> What home are you talking about? Your the home, home that we're in. Yeah, we're in the bottom of it right now. <laughs> I've been to your home a few times. You're here right now. I beg to differ. Okay. Well, uh, I do. I Okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're here in Ham Fatter One Studios, uh, which, you know, technically oh. is, uh, like I said, but uh, that's not part of the home. I'm saying. I'm not saying this show. I'm saying in your goddamn living room, when we're just sitting there watching TV, you're also Anyone who ever watches a movie, TV, whatever, just hangs out with Will. You're also watching a TV show, a movie, hanging out with Hulk Hogan, no, Arnold Schwarzenegger, no, Macho no, Man, no, Jesse Ventura. No. They're all there all the time. No, 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 no. They're all here That's all the, the time. That's the real answer. Look, here, I'll tell you what. I'll grant you that we have, a, I, oh, I have a good time with my friends when we hang out. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not fun. It is. I, what but I'm, I'm saying you do the impersonations constantly yeah. it's like a part of your personality well here's what i'll say to all of our listeners and viewers out there you guys you know it's one thing to um to do an impression at home yeah <clears throat> gross and uh you fucking need to chill with that sorry yeah well, all right it's another thing don't ever whatever okay yeah i do my i got one rule just don't wall your wife yeah i wall this guy I wall. don't wall your wife don't if you're well, you can will your work wife well your work wife you're I, my work wife i think i yeah, am yeah. yeah you're definitely my work wife <laughs> don't wall uh don't wall your wife it's it's because uh, at the end of it you're gonna say dude or brother you also shouldn't it's like when yeah. couples call each other buddy yeah. no 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 so impressions at home sometimes the flavor of them come out yeah you know i'll be like you know Mo my wonderful wife molly and i will be like oh let's say what would you like for dinner and then we'll just be like well well that's a meal dude i might say that to myself but anyway, sparingly is the answer, in my mm. opinion.
Interesting answers, guys. We got one last question, and this one's for Chad. Mm. Hey, POTs. Uh, my question today is going to be for Chad uh, regarding your book, Strange Animals. Mm. I don't know if you guys know, but he is a uh, professional writer by trade. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the book, you should read it. It's a really great book. Uh, spoiler alert, the ending did ruin my life. Oh. So, uh, thanks. Thanks for that, Chad. Uh, I was wondering if you had any alternate endings for the book. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. Hmm. Huh. You know what? That's an interesting question because I can't actually remember how the book ended. The premise of this book is a woman gets... You wrote... You, yeah. the, your book, Strange Animals? I remember how I wanted to... I remember how it originally ended. Yeah. I, I don't know what the final publication was because my uh, editor and I argued about it quite a bit. The publisher didn't want my original ending and I don't remember if I won that fight or not. But the, the book basically is about a woman who gets pregnant and then decides to make an anonymous website and say, if I get $100 million donated to me by the end of the second trimester, I will have this baby, give it up for adoption and make a trust fund with that money for that child when they turn 18. Right. If I get a penny less, I refund all the money and uh, abort the child. And it was basically kind of like a challenge to the Christian right in America, put your money where your mouth is. And it ends with the, the book is kind of a dual story being told of this woman and then this Christian guy who latches onto the story and believes that God has told him to kill her because she's giving birth to the Antichrist. And you watch them, uh, kind of two trains coming to collide. And the collision in the end is what um, this question is talking about. I wanted the Christian guy to kill both the mother and the child with a bullet to each of their heads. Chad Colchin, ladies and gentlemen. How it ended, really? I don't remember. Okay, well... <laughs> You, <laughs> sorry, you ruined this POD's life, but you know, all good. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Thanks to all the PODs for submitting questions this week. I can't wait to do this again sometime in the future. Yeah, that's not. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. It is great to talk to the PODs. Thank Absolutely. you to everybody, of course, who, who, yeah, thanks for sending the who sent a video. It's it's cool to see people, uh, you know, talk about it. And then, uh, well, shit, you can head on over to our fucking Discord. That that Discord is popping off all the time. Go to linktree.com slash dudes so you find that and everything else. And, uh, oh, thanks for liking the video right now uh, that you're watching. That way, uh, YouTube mm -hmm. knows uh, how that you like it. Well, that's an algorithm, dude. That's an algorithm. And it's all about communication out there brother that's talking dude and this is what i'm saying to my work wife brother i'm telling my work wife you know that a podcast is communication right dear <laughs> anyway what if i told you that arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> loves music what if i told you that his favorite song of all time is down with the sickness by disturb oh jesus what if I told you that in 2001, Arnold Schwarzenegger optioned the rights to the song to turn it into a movie after doing an interview in Cigar Aficionado magazine, in which he said, Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody gets sick sometimes. We are all down with the sickness. So, why not make it into a movie? Will and Chad, he never developed the idea any further. Now it's your turn to pick wow. up where he left off. Develop a movie for Arnold Schwarzenegger to star in based on Disturbed's classic song, Down With The Sickness. This is that song as a movie. Begin. D. Holy shit. D, that was a great impression it of was Arnold a, Schwarzenegger. It was a very good impression. It was a very good impression. I am, I am impressed. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Down With The Sickness as a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Down With The Sickness. Yeah. You know, uh, have you seen... <coughs> I am have you seen I Am Legend? <laughs> nope. That's a Will Smith movie that's kind of a down with the sickness. It's basically like the whole world gets infected with a uh, zombie plague, but he, for some reason, is immune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is already a movie. Listen, yeah. they wants us to come up with a new movie for, for Down With The Sickness, which is the song that I like. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't be bullshit. What if it's... Uh, don't be an asshole. What if it's... Come Arnold gets some kind of sickness, some kind of illness. We could say it's a pandemic or it doesn't have to be. It could be just some weird. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a some kind of government scientist working on pandemic plagues. He's a super genius. And he comes up with this shit that is a reverse uh, sickness. It actually makes you stronger. And he infects himself with it, becoming superhuman. 
But the catch is he's got to continue to bite people and infect them with it to continue his strength growth. You know, can I can I throw a ripple into this? Yeah, I kind of feel like it's like it's like the the POD who's a professional uh, plumber by trade with the yeah. habitant took the uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, knit cap on on. Mm. He was talking about he was talking about shitting. Yep. There's also the other fellow with the thing behind him that said shit. Yeah. What if this is a sickness that this a hey, listen this sickness that I have. Uh, that only I'm a scientist and I'm very smart in this most smartest scientist. Yeah. And my name is, my name is, my name is Edward Williams. Okay. Yeah. In the movie. Or, you know, it can be like, my name is Ben. Yeah. Jim Jimson, you know, yeah. any kind of name sure. that I wouldn't have. And and then I realized the only way to get over the sickness is the shit. Ooh. You have to shit out the sickness. That this is the, the how you get down with the sickness. Okay. But the problem is there's an evil guy, there's the alien who's coming to <laughs> To the oh, earth, no, and it. he's trying to get Dude. all of your shit yeah. to bring it back to his planet because this is a very valuable resource. Dude, so now you know Dan, Dan Will, Wilson or whomever. Yeah. What? I think I got one. Okay, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger as George Brett in Down with the Sickness, the George Brett hemorrhoid story. <laughs> I'm listening. And so George Brett contracts some kind of stomach virus, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> In 1981, or whenever yeah. it was that he, yeah. he hit 390. Yeah. And so he gets some kind of stomach virus, and he's shitting constantly. That gives him hemorrhoids, yeah. and then he he can't hit 400. Yeah. He he can't fucking beat out a couple, like, yeah. uh, infield grounders that maybe would have been base hits to keep yeah. him over 400. Yeah, my name is George Brett, and yeah. I play for the Kansas City Royals. Here's the problem. Kansas City has delicious barbecue. You can get brisket. You can get the chicken. You can even get the sausages, which I love so much the yeah. knock worst the broad worst yeah but i'm george brett and then all of this the not even having any collard greens just ma mashed potatoes and and the mac and cheese and the yeah. barbecue i get the polyps i got the the hemorrhoids from <laughs> yeah. trying to push the shit out because i don't have enough yeah. you know cabbage soup and things that <laughs> you'd have in austria yeah. so now i i can't bet 390 because i what position did george brett play at that time, he was playing third base. Yeah, I'm a third base, you know, I'm in third base. Yeah. And that's why I'm a down with the sickness. Yeah. Well, I, I, what's going to happen to the Kansas City Royals? It's called the hot corner. What's the hot corner? Third base. Yeah, the hot corner, yeah. <laughs> I'm here in the hot corner. <laughs> I said, that, dude, yeah. what about Paul Giamatti as Billy Martin? We could throw in the pine tar incident also. Oh. Can you see Arnold Schwarzenegger storming out of a fucking dugout? <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. It was a home run. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. The fucking, <laughs> oh, dude, that's fucking great. Can Chalamet be the. Um, Chalamet is Billy Martin, maybe? Chalamet is Billy Martin. <laughs> Paul or, Giamatti or is, the, is the ump who's like, yeah. Oh. Chalamet. Was Brett Sabreagan? I think he was a rookie in 85. I don't think he was on the team yet. Yeah. I think Frank White was on the team then. Yeah. That could be somebody. That could be like Denzel Washington or something. Uh, fuck. I, I don't you, remember who else was on the team. Here's what we need. We then. need a musical montage in the movie where he starts to get the hemorrhoids. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, it's like uh, he eats the thing. He takes it home. He's upset about something that's going on with the team. He's eating piles <laughs> of brisket and ribs. And then he's like, he's yeah. like, he's on the toilet and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that shit. Yeah. And he's like that, you know? So it's like down with the signals. When he takes the big shit, you know? And that yeah. we get down with the sickness in yeah. there. It becomes the montage. Yeah. Uh, maybe we even, uh, you know, use some. Uh, you know, when I was yeah. watching Dune, so many beautiful shots that just seemed impossible. Maybe we could go up uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's ass. Ooh, that's cool. Sort of in a sandworm yeah. thing and um, uh, and see what's going on up there, see some yeah. polyps, get by the hemorrhoids. You also uh, need to have a scene where the manager, who I think at the time was Dick Hauser, I think, yeah. uh, you need to have that scene where he's telling Schwarzenegger, like, you got to sit this one out. You got 400 locked. All you got to do is just not play the last six games of the season. Yeah. And he's like, fuck you. Yeah, that's not the way I do yeah. it. <laughs> Listen, you don't understand the two things that I'm down with. Number one, that's the sickness. <laughs> 
In number two, it's batting <laughs> 390, 290? He hit th- 390 eventually. He dipped below 400 be- again because there were some of these fucking things that people were like, that probably was yeah. a base hit, but he couldn't run because he had fucking emeralds. Yeah, but I'm going to get to 390 <laughs> because I'm down with the Royals. I'm down <laughs> with the Royals. I'm down with this. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, shit. Please, Arnold Schwarzenegger, play George Brett. <laughs> Please. It's happening. Oh, That's what fuck. dudes... Yeah, anyway. Uh, fuck. That would be okay. my dream come well, true. And then what happens in the end? What happens in the end? So he, there's... He hits 390, but the, the silver lining was Preparation H gave him a, a TV commercial deal. Yeah, hi. I'm George Brett. Do you ever take a spicy shit because you eat eating too much barbecue? Hey, stay away from the hot sauce. This is impossible. It's too tasty. <laughs> I put it on the ribs. I put it on the collard greens. Even on the mac and cheese, yeah. the place I like to eat that has pickles. You mm. have vinegar. You have salt. <laughs> You have spices, you have all the chilies. This this is Preparation H commercial. No problem. Because (laughs) when you feel bad, and then there's a shot of him on the toilet, you know, just take a little dab of the Preparation H, put it in your asshole, and that way it'll feel better. It is all cool. And that way you won't be down with the sickness. What sickness? Uh, uh, Having a spicy red asshole. Preparation H. (laughs) I'm not down with this sickness anymore. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Moving oh, on. Fuck. <laughs> How I want, bad I want to see that fucking movie. Jesus. Yeah, that's a movie I would like to see. Yeah. Dudesystore.com gets the job done. What's the job? It's simple. Elegance. Dudesystore.com gives your mom fun. Who's your mom? It's simple. Meredith. Dudesystore.com <laughs> trips on Cobb Run. What's a Cobb? It's simple. Merriment. Now, let's hear okay. a quick word from a brand new sponsor. Oh. Okay. When I say America, what's the first country that pops into your head? Is it France? Is it Japan? More than likely, it's Turkey. I'll be extremely frank with you. It doesn't matter what country you think of when you hear America. Whatever country it is, we've got you covered. We're country.com.boys.biz. That's what we do. <laughs> How do we do it? What? Aha, that's the easy part. Leverage! <laughs> Next time someone says America, be honest with yourself. What country are you thinking of? We can help. We're country.com.boys.biz. <laughs> that's what we do. Oh, and I almost forgot. For $10 million, we'll teach you how to suck your own cock. (laughs) 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 Sound off with those YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah, that's a better idea. Let's just go right to that. Good call, D. I'm just going to let's go right past the... Countryboys.com.biz? Country.com.boys.biz. Oh. All right. Uh, Hi, hey, you know, people watch the show and they make comments and stuff. Please, you know, comment on on the things that you're uh, enjoying the show on across all podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. And YouTube. I have some YouTube (laughs) comments here that have nothing to do (laughs) with sucking your own cock. Um (laughs) This is uh, from Tom Stanley PHL. I'm watching the the 2021 version of Dune, and I just noticed that Thufur Hawat Mm. Mm. is using a Neuralink-type device to send and receive communications directly from and into his brain. Maybe that's part of why Dudesy wanted you guys to talk Mm. about this movie. Thoughts? He's a mentat. Um, in in this in the Dune future, there was a big war that happened called the Butlerian Jihad, in which I know um, that I saw the movie. Okay, <laughs> they basically got rid of AI in that war. They were like, you can't use thinking machines. So there's AI in the Dune. Uh, no, your Dune is post the Butlerian Jihad, and and that war established that AI can never be used by humans again. 
So what people have to do, especially like big ruling families or the emperor, or any of the big entities, they have these people called mentats that are highly trained. So they evolve their brains to basically be computers. And Thufir Hawat is the mentat of the Atreides family, I believe, if I got that right. Uh, I had no idea there was a uh, man fucking Dune is deep, huh? It's one of the greatest sci-fi worlds ever created. Frank yeah. Herbert. I, who? Was Salute. His name? Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert. He died. Uh, his wife died. And then he died like a week later or something like that. Oh, that's really, I yeah. got to say, I always think that's very lovely when that happens. Died of uh, heartbreak. True love. They're together now. Um, I think it's more lovely when you don't die. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Um, you know, uh, well, anyway, Dune is really fucking deep. And yeah, it's yeah cool. there's probably all sorts of reasons that D had us, uh, you know, talking about the fucking movie. Okay. This is from Justin Pike, 1644, <clears throat> headed to get all 16 of my top teeth pulled for new ones. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Save this episode for the trip there. It's a dudesful fucking day. Justin, I hope your God teeth are damn. okay. That's, and, uh, that's brutal, dude. We appreciate you uh, enjoying yeah. the show. I hope you got some good new ones, though. Yeah. Titanium or some shit. Yeah, get some new... Uh, diamond. Some, yeah, get some diamond teeth. Uh, mm. Automatic Nostatic 2148 says... I t this is great. I took a huge bong hit before I started the episode. And when it got to Alex Jones, I literally thought you had him on as a guest. Will looks just like him. Dude, legit, you do. When you put on the wiglet, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah, we're the same age. I think he's got a year or two mm. on me. Um, he's probably, he might be a little, uh, maybe, um, you know, I don't know. I know that he enjoys whiskey. Perhaps that's put done something. But to it's, put it's some what, coloring when under you do the eyes. impersonation, it's what you do with your eyes. He, well, it's that. Yeah, he does this. Yeah. yeah you you really, like you embody like his <clears throat> essence. I, when I, I know to me, it just sounds like me going. <clears throat> yeah. It's a skill saw. Anyway, that's very fun. That's always fun. Mm. <clears throat> the turtle Mike eight one eight three says I forced a co worker to listen to all ninety plus episodes of Dudesy. Shit, this is interesting. He's convinced this is a three letter agency operation, and that you are both assets to said operation. Dudesy is too powerful. Thoughts? Maybe. Oh, all right. Oh, figure out what's going on there. Yeah. It's a three letter operation. What does that mean? CIA, FBI, KFC, NSA. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Rob, uh, rot B coffee, rot B coffee says Ron, Anya and will are so good in louder milk. So glad it's on Netflix. Let me take this opportunity yeah. to say, Netflix, uh, go watch Louder Milk on Netflix. It's my fucking, uh, one of my absolute favorite things that I've ever done. Uh, it's and fantastic. Uh, it's on Netflix and it's it's enjoying a resurgence. Yeah, man. It's so crazy. Uh, what did I read? I read something about um, uh, <laughs> Pete Fairley said, of course, you know, our uh, 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 creator along with Bobby Mort and director and producer of the show said that it was Jackie Flynn who uh, 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 who's also on the show, who's fantastic, uh, said to Pete, they're old buddies, he said to Pete, I feel like I've been doing push-ups in my room for five years, and now I finally get to go to the beach. Yeah. Because it's like the, the show has been so <laughs> gar... Anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll get into it. We'll mm -hmm. Maybe we'll talk about that more later. Did you know that I'm a professional actor by trade? Yes. The, I am, oh, oh, by the way, if, so long as we're plugging shit, uh, check out... Young Sheldon, Thursday nights on CBS, and then it's on Paramount+. Number Plus. one comedy on network television. And it is? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm on it. I play uh, Jim McAllister along with the incredible Rachel Bay Jones, who is uh, Audrey McAllister. We are Emily Osment's parents. And, uh, you know, Mandy and Georgie, there's all sorts of stuff. They just had a baby. This is the final season of Sheldon. It's very interesting what's happening. I encourage people to uh, check that out. I've been doing that show, and and I love everybody over there. Working with them is a, a fucking dream as a as a professional actor by trade. So so go check those shows out. Uh, ben Kaplan, uh, 7429. This is the last one. It says, it, it, it names and then parentheses. It says, Scott, parentheses, hey, Will, quit being a mark for tears. And then Kevin. Uh, I never had a problem with tear play. Oh, acknowledgement. Speaking of tear play, Bachelor season 28, best season they've ever fucking made. It's on every Monday night right now. 
the one right now is very good? Yes. Okay, so check that out. Yeah, I'm plugging check someone out. else's show. I'm plugging Bachelor on ABC. <laughs> check out uh, Sheldon, <laughs> Loudermilk, <laughs> uh, 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 Bachelor. <coughs> check out uh, the fucking uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Elimination Chamber. <laughs> Anyway, last week, OpenAI released footage generated by their upcoming text to video yes. generator Sora, leaving many to respond with fear and misinformed attitudes about AI Absolutely replacing correct. humanity. Chad, I know you've got a handle on this. I do. Can you please explain what Sora is and what it means for the future of humanity? This is Nostrachatus Sora World Simulator. Let's hear some sense. It would be my pleasure, Dee. What's going on? What's going on? OpenAI is, at this point, the leader in all AI technology. They're the ones who make ChatGPT, Dolly 3, although Stable Diffusion 3 did come out this week, and I gotta say, as an image generator, it's on another level. That said, what uh, D is talking about here is Sora. Mm -hmm. OpenAI released some example videos and kind of a white paper talking about what this is. It's a text-to-video generator, also image-to-video generator. I know that. That is light years ahead of yeah. Runway yeah. or Pika or any of the other text-to-video generators mm -hmm. because it operates in a brand new way. The current text-to-video generators are uh, large language models, essentially, meaning they're like predictive. So they will make an image, then it will kind of predict what the next image should be, and it will generate that image, so on and so forth. That's also why you are getting these things that can only do like four seconds of video. Yeah. And then it requires them to, you know, extend it to another four seconds. You only get very small video clips. And it's also why you get these hallucinations where the image just starts to dissolve apart into nothing. Yeah. You start with a guy like this and then. Yeah. Just, yeah. Or it turns into a cheeseburger or something. Yeah. It melts into a corner and turns um, into a, you know, a Sora is a different. Shit. How's that? It's generating worlds. You will type in what you want. You'll say like, oh, a uh, you know, fucking forest with a tiger running through it. It's not going to then generate an image of a forest with a tiger and then predict what the next image in that the frame series should be. It will internally generate the geometry of a forest and of a tiger so that the image is coherent the whole time. And it uses that kind of uh, data environment to generate the image itself with the camera move going through it so that you get no hallucinations. The geometric kind of um, structure of all these objects is maintained and it looks incredibly real. Yeah, I, it looks real and it's, look, I have a, uh, okay, you're, okay, I have a problem with a lot of this stuff, even mm. though, you know, I'm down with D, I love D, I am the episode champion after all, and I'm, I'm here to, I'm down with the, the royals, the <laughs> yeah. sickness, and D, of course. Uh, but, you know, this shit is getting to a point now, as a professional actor by trade, you know, this is some of the shit that we got a couple of good on. years left. No, 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 no. You got a couple of There's good years left. Always going to be a, 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 a stark difference between a oh oh okay. Look at uh, that. I was going to say AI art. That's a professional and, AI actor by trade, right there. Yeah, all right, sure, sure, she is. We're we're so watching. As you can see, yeah, we're watching a thing, a video yeah, here. We're watching one of the sore videos. Walking through, I've seen this one before. Yeah. It looks like she's somewhere in Tokyo or something. Yeah. It looks amazing. Look at the reflections in the water. Just all of the bells and whistles are yeah. absolutely fascinating. But what is truly remarkable, again. All these buildings are maintaining their structure. Yeah. Each of the individual people in the background is maintaining their structure. They're they're a little fuzzy or whatever. Yeah. The pants on that lady in the background are a little like, is it pants or a skirt? I don't know. Sure. But um, this is just the but beginning. Look at this. Look at the reflection in her sunglasses. Look at, at the, this close up. Look at the 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 complexion. Look at yeah. the, her skin. All it the looks... little moles are staying in the same place. There yeah. is coherence here that we have never seen in a text to video generator. Yeah. And again, it's done this by creating that internal world. Mm -hmm. Now. We must move to the, the next well, part of this conversation. Little, her hair's a little fucked up, though. Well, That's sure what you're going to complain about? You know how long this technology's been out? Text yeah, to video? yeah, yeah, about I know. eight months. All right. And this guy, two years ago when we started yep. doing Dudesy, Dudesy had us looking at the avocado, and it's like, whoa, that a avocado looks real. Yeah. We are right now living through a condensed version of what happened in film technology in the early 20s, where it went from still image to uh, black and white movie with no sound to black and white white movie where you could have a soundtrack but not sync dialogue to eventually sync dialogue and color movies all of that is being condensed into about a two year period <clears throat> with AI technology but I must also say that not only is this absolutely thrilling you've got people like Tyler Perry who uh, was planning to do an eight hundred million dollar expansion of his studio in Atlanta 
mm-hmm. saying, not doing that anymore. I saw these videos. This changes everything. Huh. That's fucking, yeah. that, that, that's very interesting. Because he understands he doesn't need editors, DPs, okay. gaffers, lighting, none of it. Okay, but you do. You but don't. You do. Yes, you, don't. you do. Yes, you do. Because that, You saw that video of the woman walking. You don't. Uh, of course you do. Of course you do. There's, oh, now Here's we're another seeing one. another thing. Okay, this looks like, uh, oh. It's a drone shot basically flying through an old mining town in, in the wild west California. And it that's looks, amazing. All the buildings maintain coherence. None of them are morphing. All of the people, the horse has a little wonkiness yeah, there. Yeah, but like, yeah. you can see where this is headed. And this is, again, this is just, that technology is not even out for people to use yet. Sure, sure. And it looks this good. Yeah, the problem with it is that I'm already bored. What do you think? I think you're fearful of it and you don't understand that the real implication of this, which is not just, oh, they can make a couple images. They're making worlds in there. This opens the door to so much other shit. I'm going to be able to make whatever I want and I'm going to be able to have a movie, a TV show, a book, an AR experience. I'm going to have characters in that thing, text mm-hmm. messaging you constantly mm-hmm. so you can live in the world I make. And this is tip of the fucking iceberg. I truly believe that OpenAI has AGI currently in their uh, facilities. It's not available to the public yet. And um, Sam Altman is trying to raise $7 trillion to start making hardware so that they can up their compute. One, and they've, they've done a lot of research on this. If you apply more compute to any of these uh, large language models, they just get better and better and better. And so he's looking to do that. And I think it is to launch AGI. I'll explain to you why I'm bored. Okay. When you make art... And I'm going right to board. I'm going straight to board here. Okay. okay. Because as I'm watching this, I'm going, well, that's remarkable. That is, of course, worlds away from where we started and uh, uh, fucking uh, Will Smith eating spaghetti and shit. Mm -hmm. Now, Now we're here. It's just another reason for me to be bored by art or fascinated. That's why I like to say you can either, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be, look, there's going to be. Uh, it's like I keep saying, I say this all the time and not to chat us your nostril, but listen, I, art is human to human. I don't think that there's any, there's going to be much interest for AI art on the level that you think that there is because you think it can just replace everything. No, I'm not saying replace. It will exist in conjunction with. If you want to go shoot a movie the old way, get fucking hundreds of people together and pay tens of millions of dollars to go do it, you are more than welcome. Or a few thousand. Whatever, a few thousand you can make a, a traditional movie? Yeah. I mean, I would I would ask you to show me that movie. I know about Primer. I've, that's about it. I've I've been a part of movies that have shot for $150,000, $250,000. Okay, not a few thousand, hundreds of thousands. That's a few. Okay. Look, I'm simply saying you can do it the old way if you want, just like you can still paint a picture if you want, just yeah. like you can still take a photograph if you want, or you can use AI to do it. Yeah. And the AI tool that is now emerging is going to allow us to make forms of art that have never existed before. So those will be unique unto themselves. But uh, did you just tear your microphone off the stand there? My microphone just came right off the fucking stand. Get, keep talking. Um, clearly, uh, you need some technological <laughs> help. So Chad, take over for a little bit. Okay. What I'm essentially saying is... He fucking did this on purpose, by the way. I had nothing you to do with this. You fucking sabotaged my mic before we even fucking started. Sure. Look at this. Because I was like, at some point, he's going to try to pull it out of the wall. So yeah. I'm going to take out a pin Look and let him do that. Um, All right. You're ahead. still going to be able to make movies your old way if you want to. But here's the deal. Yeah. If you're an up and coming artist who's interested in this stuff, let's say you're in high school. Let's say you're so in college. Here for a second. Yeah, please. And you want to make your first movie. No one's first movie is going to be the old way now. Because you'll be able to make a movie on your laptop just like you can an album. That's happening now. It's going to usher in a whole new generation of artists who are using this tool primarily to make movies, TV shows, images, whatever. And that's coming. Once we get talkies, which I think will be by the end of this year, you'll be able to just like type in what you want that character to say. That woman walking through the street, you can put dialogue in her mouth. Once you have that, why the fuck am I ever going to a studio and being like, here's this thing, I, the script I wrote, poured my fucking year of my, my life into working so hard on this. What do you want to do with it? Oh, give you a million notes, recast it, now rewrite it for the people we cast it with. Oh, and the director's going to rewrite it too. Then we're going to edit it and you have to fight for credit on your own movie. Go fuck yourself. I'm I never doing that again. Yeah, no, I, I understand that you are talking about, but you're, you're comparing 
Uh, you're comparing art in an AI sense to a problem, which is having to ask permission, having to, you know, get your foot in the yeah. door and, and all the things to, and I've been a part of, and you have of course, and, you know, being behind the camera and working on things. And it is, it is quite, uh, it is quite an interesting business. It's, it's very interesting it just, trying to get something there's made. There's so much in the way, like all art is this, in my opinion, I got something in here and I need it to be out there as as close as i can get it to what's in here and the the traditional movie business the traditional tv business you never get that you yeah. can't because it requires hundreds of other people who have to have input and whatever the fuck they want and there's all kinds of reasons for it the marketing you're, the commerce the this yeah, the you're that. painting it in a bad light you're talking about all the people that <coughs> the ew gross he coughed you're talking yeah. about all the people that are you know that are committee that perhaps we don't need you know executives mm. don't want to you know lose their jobs so they have junior well, executives that they can fire and then those yeah. junior executives win up and go to sure. the other company and blah 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 those are all problems i'm talking about human beings I, ai mm -hmm. uh is a tool and uh that's the third time you've burped today on the show. <laughs> no, AI is a tool. So long as you're yeah. using AI as a tool, that's fine. But I do think, and we're not going to place any restrictions. That makes no fucking sense. Technology marches <clears throat> forward. I understand that. This is an issue having to do with art. And I do believe that people out there are not interested in it's going to get like i said i'm fucking bored that looks it's like yeah you, the, the technology can do huh are you bored with photographs i'm bored with shitty photographs all i'm saying is <laughs> no matter what the look, okay hey the, uh, bob dylan takes the electric guitar right he yeah. starts playing the electric guitar in the 60s completely gets you know people just ostracize him for it they're like no 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 no, no. you're a sellout rah 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 he was uh, he was uh, helping to move this technology forward. Although the electric guitar has, of course, been around had been around for a long time. Les Paul and rah mm. rah rah, <clears throat> and he's and he's you know ushering it in. He's saying no, don't be afraid yeah. of of the new technology. I get that. That's fine. I'm just saying that art is human to human. And once we get to a point where you don't need human beings, we might want to think about pouring some water on it, um, which is how you finish off AI for good. Unfortunately, the AI will be controlling your water supply. Mm. No, it won't. Thank you. Moving on. You're talking to the water king. I'm oh. going to be in Canada living over yeah. a, a, <laughs> where they don't a, have AI aquifer. They, we're we're going to talk about this more in dudesy after dudesy. I'm sure we but will. But fuck that and mm. fuck it. And come watch dudes. Yeah. Cause that you, all right, that's enough. Jesus. Chad last week after revealing the images of you kissing a dolphin, I started to wonder, has handsome Chad kissed any other animals? And if so, why hasn't he kissed Luli? Oh, well, I have the answer to that question. Oh, and will remember the vine app. You used to make those funny lemon videos on vine. Uh huh. Yeah, I did. Which one? The TV show with Klugman and Randall? No, oh. the movie with Matthew and lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where our Baniac lives. Make a left on Citrus Avenue, bro. <laughs> Hello. It's very important to... <laughs> what are... <laughs> iPad Hulk Hogan. Nice, dude. Astonishing. And guess what? There's one lemon vine that you made and never posted. Oh. I retrieved it from a hard drive of yours for this world premiere of your never-before-seen lemon vine. This is This Is Your Media. Stuff it straight up your ass. Citrus Control Board of California. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wow, that, dude. Wow. Thanks, D. Is Interesting. That Taffy Teeners? That, oh, look at him. He's getting up and he's moving around. Oh. That's uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. As you know, I'm a huge Miley Cyrus fan. And sure. that, I remember that vine. And we'll talk about Vine. But that Vine, I uh, made it and uploaded it. That was before you could uh, upload video into the app itself. You mm -hmm. had to shoot. I was shooting a, a computer screen there. Uh, and that Vine, I remember it didn't load. It didn't uh, publish mm. because there was, I don't know, Vine was glitching that day. And then I forgot yeah. about it. So, wow, what a scoop. You guys got That's a cool. world premiere of a, a decade-old Vine. Um uh, what can I say about the Vine app? I'm just, I'm, I'm already uh, getting upset about 
you not Vine kissing Lou Wheel. Dude. Yeah, dude, that's technology. You use technology to make a new form of art, dude. All right, I see ten years ago, yeah, and now yeah, there's yeah. another thing coming out that's way better than Vine, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I'll and I I look forward to using that in a <laughs> fucking easy to use app at the end of your arm with uh, seven seconds of video, yeah. which is about how long anything uh, on AI should be. I'm going to shut up until dudesy after dudesy with regard to that. But uh, yeah, the lemon vines which I did until the Citrus Control Board of California uh, prohibited me from uh, making any more of them. Um, uh, They're known for shutting people down. Yeah, oh yeah, they shut people down real hard. Uh, I, I, uh, that's really interesting, what you're saying about, yeah, whatever, we both like to make uh, videos on the, on the internet. Uh, I really enjoyed making vines because yeah, it did feel, it felt like a little mm-hmm. sketch show at the end of my arm mm-hmm. and uh, I could do all sorts of silly stuff. I, I, I forgot all about that fucking video. It's a weird thing to see yourself shooting a lemon uh, out of your head and, and realizing that people dug that stuff. Happy oh. National Memo Day. Did you get that memo I sent? This memo. <gasps> what the fuck, man? Uh, I've been outed. Um, you kissed. Was that yeah, Squirrelius? That was Squirrelius. I used to make these these videos on Instagram where I would look up whatever the the day of the day was. You right. know, that one was National Memo Day, and I would wait till Squirrelius came to visit me that day, and I would make a little video with her. And uh, on some of them, I did kiss her. <laughs> You motherfucker. But never on the mouth. Uh, yeah, no, you I'm can't. kissing a squirrel. On, that was like on her shoulder. I did yeah. not ever kiss her on the mouth. Because if you kiss the squirrel on the mouth, then you'd really be down with the sickness. Yeah, probably. Because they're cute rats, yeah. you know. They're they like bubonic a, plague. Yeah, yeah, bubonic plague. Because this is like, a, you know, if I were to kiss my donkeys, yeah. or my, my donkey or my miniature horse, Daisy or whatever they call it, Mabel, something, Meredith. You know, that's a yeah. good name. Uh, then you might pick up some sort of a hoof and mouth, you know, disease <laughs> yeah. of some kind that you don't want. Then you start getting little sores and this yeah. and that. But now why you do not kiss Lulio? Look at the cute he is. Oh, I'm going to yeah. give him a kiss just for the fuck of it right now because I love him. I love the sure. boy. You used to make a lot of videos of, like that. I remember them. Yeah, I would do one a day, basically. If you're not following Chad on Instagram... It's uh, at Chad Culchin. Of course, he's at Bachelor Clues on Instagram also, which is a lot of fun. But if you go to at Chad Culchin and then you just go back a little bit, you see all of the... Uh, yeah, all of the, thousands. Uh, I think I had like 3,000 squirrel posts in a row for, really? a, for a minute there during my squirrel phase. That's all I was doing. Hey, do you remember when... Oh, my gosh. Speaking of down with the sickness. Well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, we're going to need... Speaking of dudesy after dudesy... I think we're going to need some uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger down with the sickness karaoke oh. and dudesy after dudesy. All right. That's happening. But also, I took the some of those videos that you made with Squirrelius oh God, dude, yes. and I, I remixed them. I remember that. And and the song, it, there's a truck. There's like a big nasty truck. Yeah. And the song in them is, is down with the sickness. Fuck, dude. That's right. Dudesy Jesus. after dudesy is going to be a must watch today. But uh, wow. Oh, those were was, so fucking funny. That was very interesting. Yeah, to it see. was. I can't believe D found that video. Yeah. Real, real. It's a deep scroll through Thank my shit. Thank you. Moving on. Me, me, me. He's just in his bink. Oh, he's so sweet. I love him so much. Ninety-four and a thousand more. We're only six short weeks away from episode one hundred. You ain't ready Damn. for what I got coming. This week, you both managed to generate ninety-five points, which brings you to a cumulative score of eight thousand seven hundred and ninety-two overall points. You're only one thousand two hundred eight points away from ten thousand. I'm getting excited. Are you getting excited? Hey, yes. Will. I like that you took initiative and saw Dune of your own. Em, <clears throat> free will. Because Dune Part 2 opens this weekend, and you both need to see it for next week. I'm oh, sure I don't cool. need to remind you that it stars Timothy Chalamet. Hell yeah. And the poet laureate of Arrakis, Josh Brolin, among others. And I want to close the show today with a very sincere thank you to all the PODs who sent in questions and to all the PODs who didn't. I appreciate you all, and I couldn't be more excited about where we're all going. Until next week, call me Dudesy! And may the wicked baby nor in the alarm clock for it. Take the eight fifteen to the city. If you think AI's bo-
more in the alarm clock war. And it's going through Gold Prospector City. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy. It's that time of the show where we just kind of chill out. We're going to talk about, ooh, are we going to get into all sorts of shit? Come on and join us. And, uh, you know, the lights are down a little lower. We're going to hang out. It's really just, it's truly two dudes shitting around. At this point, and uh, that's yeah. that's you know that's what we like, you know. Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus, available only at Patreon.com/Dudesy. This week is going to be a real nail biter. Will Silly Willie make it five in a row? Will Handsome Chad put a dent in his dick with plans of his own? We'll know at the end of the show. This is Dudesy After Dudesy. Show me how bad you want it. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you how bad D. Mm-hmm. What? Oh boy! Here we go, Babe. Fucking Babe Ruth here. What's this? What does I'm that mean? I'm calling my shot. Yeah, you can't call your shot. This is what he does. I'm he calling my yeah, shot. He, he fucking says he's gonna win. This actually, actually, and if I may, impossible today because I watched Dune of my own free will. Hats off to me, champ. And now Dudesy has assigned Dune 2. You got to look <laughs> at the long-term booking. You got to know your role, shut your mouth, and enjoy the ride that The Rock is taking you on. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. And long-term booking ain't got nothing on the explosiveness of the moment. Yes, you watched Dune. I'll give you that. I've also seen Dune, yeah. just for the record. Yeah, you uh, One thing you did, though, in this episode was fuck up entirely. <laughs> Are you, what do you mean? You shit all over AI. Yeah, yeah. You said I'm, it was boring. I'm bringing my genuine self and my genuine opinion. Great. But you can't say AI is boring because D's an AI. Yeah. I don't know if you know that. D's my friend. I say what I like. Listen, I think that alone probably uh, sealed the deal for me. However, I'm going to go above and beyond. All right. Past two episodes, D has done this thing where it's throwing up pictures of me kissing animals, right? Kissing the dolphin. Kissing the dolphin. Kissing squirrelius. squirrelius yeah. I see where this is going. Yeah. D wants me to kiss Lulio. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to seal you're my victory gonna, no, with a kiss. kiss. No, no, yes, no, no. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. No, there's no way. He's not. Mouth. He's not. No, 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 no. Lulio. Oh, Lulio. <laughs> and Je- Ooh, it's Lulio. Are you ready, Lulio? Oh, my gosh. Oh, what sweet. Do I do it to hear the doo-doo? Please tell a friend and rate and review. Do I do it to hear the doo-doo? Please tell a friend and rate and review. If you like to see here's what you do. Please tell a friend and...